These are the Z-axis components, and there's actually a lot more components than you'll actually need. Um, these are all uh, provided with the kit. You have the, the Z-axis top, which is where the bearing goes, the top bearing goes, and the motor mount will be on top of here. Can you give me the motor mount? And the Z-axis motor, uh, motor will go on the very top of the motor. We'll receive two different um, size, sizes of, of motors. You can have the small NEMA 24 or 23, and you can also have the, the larger NEMA 34. And this portion right here allows protrusion of the, the motor flange for the uh, 34. And this is the top bearing. You have adjustability here for the lead screw adjustability in one direction. And for the bottom bearing, it will actually be uh, in this orientation. You'll notice that there, there are two of them. One for a two inch hose for a vacuum. Actually, this is larger than two inch hose, so the vacuum hose can go through. And this is for the four inch variety of, of, um, of vacuum hoses. And you'll also notice that these are also adjustable, so the entire, the entire assembly top will be able to move back and forth. As you know, I also generally recommend two different types of routers, and that's the Porter Cable 892 or the 890 series, and the Porter Cable 7500 series, which is the, the larger, larger size. The Porter Cable 7500 series have uh, they have little uh, dimples on the side of the motor housing, and these make way for that. And you'll have uh, you can pick either either one. The, the one with the holes on the side are the the uh, the bottom mount, so it can, can be connected to a vacuum hose um, piece that receives the end of the vacuum hose right here. And a skirt will need to be attached along the edge of this piece all the way around. So when you when you connect it, you'll have the skirt, and you can always disconnect it whenever you need to. And these are also made for both routers and both types of hoses. You'll see for the larger router, you have this one, the larger hole for the router, and you have the smaller hose fitting. And the same thing for the larger router with the larger hose, and the smaller router with the smaller hose. Now for the actual rail, the rail assembly, you have two different sizes of that. You have the one that is going to be short, that really is mainly uh, used for sheet goods. You're doing a lot of routing of thin material, sheet material, and it'll keep the the overall height of the uh, the Z-axis machine down. So you you won't have to worry about clearance issues above um, overhead. And these are the fronts. These are a lot larger than the ones from the, from the Blackfoot there to add a lot more uh, rigidity for the for the entire assembly. So longer uh, travels are possible. And, okay, so we have another side set of rails underneath that is made for, for longer travel. And this will go up to 36 inches of travel for the Z-axis. And I suggest these rails to be used up on a frame type machine, not on this table, because the table will restrict any movement of the Z-axis, obviously. So the frame really needs to have a, a rather large hole or however size hole you need it to be so the z-axis can go down um, further and these are supplied to you just in case you want to do that we'll be putting together the, the shorter rails in this video and we'll start out by doing the back portion of it we'll be attaching the larger of the two uh, mounts since I'm, uh, my person is going to be using the quarter cable 7518 we'll attach these here we'll attach the bottom ones to one of these and it will go in this in this area here and then we'll begin by attaching actually we're going to start with the, the top because the rails go on last so we're going to actually attach we're going to attach these up here and then the, the router mount will do the same thing with this one and then we'll attach the other side um, to this position and then after everything is assembled we'll go ahead and start assembling the back part of it with the rails the easiest way to assemble it like this, we need to put together the assembly without the rails, is we have, we, we pretend the, the, the front is going to be over here. And we just lay it down like this, and the rail is going to go on this side, which will be the back. And we, have, we want to make sure that this hole at the very end, which is the end rail support, um, the, uh, the, the last screw that's going to be used for the rail, is all the way, it's on the top side. So. We have this oriented correctly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
You want to make sure that the, the counter bore hole here is on the inside of the Z axis rail assembly so that the head of the screw can sit flat when the lower rubber mount is in this area so it doesn't conflict. Okay, so we have the, the front piece of the assembly attached. Now we need to put on the first router mount, the top router mount, and then we'll be putting on this piece right here, and then we'll attach the bottom router mount. The reason why we're putting the top router mount on first is because we need access to these screws, the screw heads, to be able to attach the router mount, hence in this location. And once we put this on, we won't have that, the luxury of um, getting those screws in. So in this step to get the router mount on, we'll be using one and a half inch screws here and cross dowels. Now we're going to put on the this back portion here. As we do this, we're going to put on the rail at the same time, and we're going to connect it in this location. And then we'll put the rail on the other side. And following that, we'll put the small piece on, and then the lower router mount. Now that we have this piece secure and with the rail, this really should be kind of loose, um, loosely uh, put in. We can now uh, fasten the top motor mount or top router mount onto this piece. So use one and a half inch screws and cross dowels. I'm going to explain. Now we're ready to put the other rail or the, the other side of the z-axis, the rail. And like I said, all of it should really be put um, to be fastened loosely until the entire assembly is done. Um, and then after we put on this rail, we're going to put on, we're going to make sure that these are tightened. And then we're going to put on this other piece, um, which is for the lower router mount. And then we'll attach the lower router mount. We'll be using two inch screws for this um, side of the rail as well. Bring another patch of one and a half. Oh, big patch. Right. Same thing. Right. Just on the... Remember, don't tighten them all the way. There you go. 
Ah, não escutei Já mais? Dois? Mais dois? Não, não, não. We have enough screws on here now on the rails to be able to align it and normally what I do is just put it on its back and use the table to make sure that these are these two are parallel. So we're gonna make sure that these are loosened. Okay, now they're loosened and they're they've been able to naturally auto um, align for the parallel to allow these these two rails to be parallel. Now we can go ahead and tighten them all the way. I'm going to go from front to back to the other side. And the remain, remainder can be... You want to make sure you do this by hand, not by a drill, because you're going to get a different torque on each screw. 